in this semester i'll have you quantum mechanics 2 for the sake of convenience as usual this paper is also divided into five different modules in the first three modules we will talk about the various approximation procedures and in module 4 we will talk about the quantum mechanical consideration on scattering and we will conclude this paper in module 5 with developing some of the ideas of relativistic quantum mechanics. Now we will see the first part of this paper that is approximation methods. From your discussion in second semester, you might have already came to the conclusion that the entire business of quantum mechanics can be summarized in terms of one activity. That is, the quantum mechanical study of any system involves the development of the dynamical equation of motion satisfied by the system referred to as the Schrodinger's equation or the so-called Schrodinger wave equation given by the expression minus h bar square by 2m del square plus v which is the Hamiltonian operator representing the system operating over psi equal to e psi. Whatever may be the context in which we will be making a quantum mechanical analysis, the only work that we will have to cope with happens to be the formulation of this differential equation and solving this equation by which we will be capable of evaluating this value of psi, the work function. As such, it has no meaning. However, we propose that or we have already developed our concept and considerations that all the measurable parameters as well as all the informations that we will have to obtain regarding a system could be obtained from this work function psi. However, to be very frank, the formulation of such a differential equation and an act of finding an exact solution to such a differential equation is possible only in the case of a very limited number of non-systems. And in most of the practical occasions, we can never even formulate such a differential equation that will be capable of representing the system exactly. This is because of the fact that the second term of this Hamiltonian, that is the potential, will not be so simple in most of the occasions. In most of the practical situations, this potential V will have a lot of contributions. Even some of these contributions will not be known to the person who is dealing with such a system. Say for example, a system can have a potential energy in terms of its position. Most often we will be representing the potential energy in terms of its position say as we represent the potential energy of a harmonic oscillator in terms of its position x as half kx square. However, there will be a lot of contributions for this potential. For instance, for instance, a charged particle can have an electrostatic potential energy arising from a scalar potential or it can have a magnetostatic potential energy arising from a vector potential. Most often there will be an electromagnetic potential that also will be contributing some corrections to this energy. So in most of the practical situations, one will have to settle down with an approximate solution instead of trying for an exact solution. Normal quantum mechanics le, itra deep fight badi kya na nanda gilum aaga na mule jayi na the oru oru activity ame. Yada ano na mula analyze che do diri kena system a system thinde dynamical equation aite, yoru differential equation, Schrodinger equation formula aite, adu solve aite. She etum simplest title sister in the case in polum. Never showing a question formulated the Yan polum, now the Kadilla hundred percent accurate title Femula than Vastava. In a carnum, then a little operator lay potential for a part in a reward a contribution in life impossible. So other normal Jarika in a position a counter potential energy matra will do. 
അങ്ങനെ അല്ല ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഒരു പ്രീ ഇലക്ട്രോൺ എടുക്കുകയാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ തന്നെ അതിന് പൊസിഷനെ കൊണ്ടൊരു പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ എനർജി ഉണ്ടാവാം അതിന് ചാർജ് കൊണ്ടൊരു പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ എനർജി ഉണ്ടാവാം അതൊരു ഇലക്ട്രോമാനിറ്റിക് ഫീൽഡിലാണ് മൂവ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അതുപോലെ നമുക്ക് അറിയുന്നുണ്ടാവില്ല ഇലക്ട്രോമാനിറ്റിക് ഫീൽഡിലാണ് മൂവ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എങ്കിൽ ആ മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് കൊണ്ട് അതിനൊരു പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ എനർജി ഉണ്ടാവാം ഇനി ഇതൊന്നും ഇല്ലെങ്കിലും ഇലക്ട്രോൺ ഒരു ചാർജഡ് പാർട്ടിക്കിളാണ് അത് നിൽക്കുന്നിടത്ത് അത് സ്വന്തമായിട്ടൊരു ഇലക്ട്രിക് ഫീൽഡ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇലക്ട്രോസ്റ്റാറ്റിക് പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ ക്രിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യും so it will have a self energy because of its existence in its own electric field or in its own electric potential that also will be contributing to the total hamiltonian operator representing the system angane verumbo edoru systemathinte krithyamayittulla schrodinger equation formulate cheyan namukku kariyilla angane oru krithyamaya schrodinger equation define cheyan polum namukku kariyathirathalam അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഒരു സിസ്റ്റത്തിന് കൃത്യമായിട്ട് ഒരു സൊല്യൂഷനും കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല അപ്പം എല്ലായ്പ്പോഴും നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ടായിരിക്കുക എക്സാക്ട് സൊല്യൂഷൻ മരീചികയായിട്ട് അവസാനിക്കും ഒരിക്കലും നമുക്കത് ഫോർമുലേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പോലും കഴിയുന്നില്ല പിന്നെയാണ് സോൾവ് ചെയ്യുന്ന കാര്യം അപ്പം എല്ലായ്പ്പോഴും നമ്മളൊരു അപ്രോക്സിമേറ്റ് സൊല്യൂഷനെ കൊണ്ട് സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈ ചെയ്യേണ്ടതായിട്ട് വരും ടു ഗോ വിത്ത് ദീസ് പ്രൊസീജിയർ ഓഫ് ഫൈൻഡിങ് അപ്രോക്സിമേറ്റ് സൊല്യൂഷൻസ് a lot of approximation methods have been introduced and this approximation methods could be broadly classified into two different categories based on the fact that whether this approximation method is giving you an approximate solution to the time dependent schrodinger equation or to the time independent schrodinger equation and accordingly we will have various approximation methods for time dependent problems as well as approximation methods for time independent problems and it's exactly these approximation procedures that will have to talk about as long as the first three modules of this paper is concerned first of all we will consider approximation methods that are suitable for time independent problems as is we will talk about three different approximation procedures in this category the first one that is being introduced by three eminent mathematicians wenzel kramer and brillouin and hence this is referred to as the wkb approximation procedure we will realize that this approximation procedure is more or less identical with the classical approximation procedure or more accurately this is just one step ahead of the classical approximation that you have already learned regarding the classical mechanical study of a system or classical mechanics of a system and hence this is given the name semi classical approximation so both these names are identical wkb and semi classical however they represent different manifestations of one and the same mathematical procedure second approximation method in this category is variational method this is also something that you have already discussed in classical mechanics module number 3 during your first semester and we will conclude approximation method suitable for time independent problems in terms of the perturbation theory perturbation theory is a general approximation procedure once you apply it for time independent problems it will be referred under the title time independent perturbation theory and the same theorem could be used to find an approximate solution to time dependent schrodinger's equation and then under such a situation the approximation procedure is referred to as time dependent perturbation theory so as such we will have to talk about these three different approximation procedures these are wkb approximation or the so called semi classical approximation this is further referred to as phase integral method also we will talk about this later then variational method and finally perturbation theory and we will consider the different manifestations of perturbation theory in the time dependent regime as well as in the time independent regime we will begin with approximation methods suitable for time independent problems i'll be altering this order as per your syllabus we will begin with perturbation theory 
time independent perturbation theory as per the syllabus we will how to follow introduction to quantum mechanics by Griffith as well as quantum mechanics by VKT, VK and you can refer these books also quantum mechanics by G. Arulda's is also a good reference perturbation theory perturbation means a disturbance to the system perturbation over it nangile shalyam disturbance mm kyaan mean jayinu varala verde poite verde irikkan varala choriya maandu angana ke jayinu enana poduve perturbation nu namlu parayu and in the energetic point of view in this act of perturbation what actually happen is that either we will be imparting some positive energy to the system or some negative energy to the system so that energy level of the system changes once you apply a perturbation to the system so in this point of view or in the point of view of perturbation theory perturbation involved any activity by which we will be adding or removing energy from a system from a quantum mechanical system so perturbation karanam or system tinde energy ke cheriya or change sambhavikkum system tinde energy ke cheridayittu change sambhavikkuna end activity ne namukku perturbation ennu paraya anganeyulla or system te pattiyane anganeyulla or quantum mechanical system te pattiyane nammal perturbation theory il padikkandadayittu verunnathu For perturbation theory apply cheyanam nundengil already we will have a system that will be satisfying this time independent schrodinger's equation h0 sin0 equal to en0 sin0 here this sub superscript 0 indicate that it is an unperturbed system or the system before a perturbation and this system is assumed to be a non system അപ്പോൾ ഈ പെർട്ടർബേഷൻ തിയറി അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്യണം എന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ആദ്യം ഒരു സിസ്റ്റത്തെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള മുഴുവൻ നോളജും അറിയണം ഒരു കൊണ്ട മെക്കാനിക്കൽ സിസ്റ്റത്തെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള മുഴുവൻ നോളജും അറിയണം അങ്ങനെയുള്ള സിസ്റ്റത്തിന് നമ്മൾ പെർട്ടർബേഷൻ നൽകപ്പെട്ടിട്ടില്ലാത്ത സിസ്റ്റം അൺപെർട്ടർബ്ഡ് സിസ്റ്റം എന്നാണ് പറയുക ആ സിസ്റ്റത്തെ പറ്റിയുള്ള മുഴുവൻ നോളജ് അറിയാന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ അതിൻ്റെ ഹാമിൽട്ടോണിയൻ അറിയണം ആ ഹാമിൽട്ടോണിയൻ അൺപെർട്ടർബ്ഡ് ഹാമിൽട്ടോണിയൻ ആണെന്ന് കാണിക്കാൻ ഞാനിവിടെ എച്ച് സീറോ എന്ന് റെപ്രസെൻ്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ വേർ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അറിയണം അൺപെർട്ടർബ്ഡ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിൻ്റെ വേർ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആണെന്ന് പറയാനും വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് സൈ എൻ സീറോ എന്ന് കാണിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിൻ്റെ എനർജി ലെവൽസ് ഇ എൻ സീറോ ഇ വൺ ആവുമ്പോൾ ഗ്രൗണ്ട് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് എനർജി ഇ ടു ആവുമ്പോൾ ഫസ്റ്റ് എക്സൈറ്റഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് എനർജി അതല്ല സീറോ എനർജി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഇ സീറോ ആകുന്ന സമയത്ത് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് എനർജി ഇ വൺ ആകുന്ന സമയത്ത് ഫസ്റ്റ് എക്സൈറ്റഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് എനർജി അങ്ങനെ ഈ നോളജ് മൂന്നും അറിയണം സോ വിൽ ഹാവ് ടു we must have a knowledge on the unperturbed hamiltonian of the system work function representing the system and the different quantum states representing the system ingana nammal parayna samayathe quantum mechanical point of view le mattoru karyam kodu nammal consider cheyandenund we already know all these eigen kets or eigen vectors of this hermitian operator that is hamiltonian and that has one important aspect also once you know all the eigen vectors of this hermitian operator hamiltonian this set of vectors will be sufficient to map the system as this will be forming definitely an orthogonal set of vectors and if you require you will be able to normalize them dividing the vector by means of their magnitude will be capable of obtaining unit vectors representing such a hilbert space so that this may be taken as an orthonormal set of vectors and the most important aspect of this orthonormal set of vectors is that such a set will be capable of mapping a space and this space happens to be the hilbert space associated with the system under our consideration as long as the first fundamental postulate of quantum mechanics is concerned corresponding to each and every quantum mechanical system there will be an abstract hilbert space and this set of vectors could be used to 
map that abstract Hilbert space in which we will be considering this problem. 